Oke, okay. uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and very uh, and good good day uh, to all the student. Okay, today I'm for for two. So my name is uh, Dr. Mawafi. So today I will explain about the uh, chapter three of the KJM442. We call it gas power cycle. So as you can see in the uh, slide now, okay, they have the schematic diagram for the typical engine for gas turbine. Okay, so why we call it gas power cycle because we use the gas to produce the power. Uh, so that's why uh, we call it gas power cycle. And as you can see also in the uh, slide now, okay, uh, we have the uh, several parts of the engine. So for the intake, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, and also the also. So this is a typical of the component that include in the system for the gas turbine engine. Okay, and then this presentation will be divided into at least four parts. Okay, the first part is introduction for the gas turbine cycle for the idea cycle. Then the second part will be the uh, we will do some exercise related to the gas power cycle, and the part three will be related to the actual cycle for the gas turbine, and then the part four will be the actual cycle of the gas turbine with regeneration. Okay. And then by the presentation now, uh, presentation lecture, okay, I will explain in detail each part, and then I will also uh, include in this presentation is a exercise, eh? exercise with the problem related to the uh, gas power cycle. Okay. So the objective for chapter three, basically for the KJM four four two, by the end of this uh, chapter, the student to able to describe the working principle of the gas turbine okay and then number two to construct able to construct the brighton cycle based on gas turbine engine and then the third one you can say the student can be able to solve the problem based on the brighton cycle and the brighton cycle with generation eh? so this is objective okay All right so this is a schematic diagram for the application for the uh gas turbine engine so as you can see here they have some uh, basic component okay so when we refer to the the previous slide on the first slide okay so this is the the actual component for the compressor and this one the actual component for the combustion chamber and this one is actual component for the turbine okay so okay as you can see here here is a combustion chamber okay right so basically the gas turbine engine is the internal combustion engine eh? so this internal combustion engine also similar with the auto cycle and petrol cycle, uh, auto cycle and the cycle previously and eh? the chapter two eh? that means the combustion is occurred inside the system okay and then uh gas turbine is a rotary machine and a mechanical system that produce power so basically the rotary machine means that this Compressor and turbine is rotated, and then this rotation will produce the power. So that's why we call it rotary, rotary machinery. Eh? And then uh, the gas turbine engine to be light, tend to be lighter and compact to make the suit they will suit to the transportation application, such as the aircraft, propulsion, and marine. Okay, so basically, gas turbine will be designed as much lighter as is it eh? as can because. When you get uh, more lighter, that means the weight for the aircraft will be reduced. And also, marine also reduce the weight, total weight. Eh? So that's why the gas turbine will be designed to be lighter as much as they can and to be compact because we have also the limitation for the sizing. Okay? So then uh, the gas turbine also common used to the stationary gas turbine. So we have three applications here. The first one, the aircraft propulsion. Second one is marine and stationary power generation. Okay, so as you can see here, okay, as you can see here, this is a picture that is used, okay, in the uh, gas turbine engine application. So as you can see here for the first slide, okay, so this is the, for the gas turbine propulsion. So here is the location for the engine. So I assume that all of 
you have no the location of the engine eh? and then here so the jet okay and then here the location for the engine eh? so this is a commercial aircraft aircraft user this typical of engine we call it turbo fan eh? to fan engine and then so this typical of engine okay normally uh in malaysia we frequently use uh used to see in the firefly so we call it turbo prop eh? turbo propeller so this is turbo propeller engine and this is a turbo fan engine and then we have another engine we call it turbo shaft engine eh? turbo shaft engine we use in helicopter so these are three applications for the gas turbine engine eh? and then beside that we use the additional gas turbine and then we use in the marine application eh? actually and then uh, because, because beside this tree okay we have another application that used in the car but it only exists in the fast and furious eight okay so if you recall fast and furious eight the uh, the dominant torero okay uh, used the black car to ram into the uh, army base of the russia eh, on the snow uh, condition eh? so that car used the gas turbine engine at the pack so this is the first application for the gas turbine in the car but in actual application this car never exists okay <laughs> but in the first and previous we can see that the application of gas turbine engine or gas power cycle inside the car so it's double power because you use the petrol engine in the front and gas turbine engine in the back so i don't know how fast so that means you can combine combine and eh? you imagine combine with the aircraft speed with the car speed so <laughs> okay right okay so to this advantage of the advantage of the gas power cycle the advantages for the gas power cycle the first one is that the very high power to weight ratio as compared to the reciprocating engine and then it's smaller than the most reciprocating engine of the same power rating and then they move in one direction only so we can produce less vibration okay so its vibration is very important in the in the uh, gas turbine engine development eh? because the vibration we contribute two things the first one is the noise second one is the fatigue the noise when when with more uh, with uh, with more vibrate okay we expect the more noise then this one actually we is we we disrupt the passengers okay cabin crew so this we we not want to this one okay and then the second one is that the contribute uh fatigue because the vibration is under cyclic mode so when the the component will be fatigue okay the mounting is fatigue so this is very dangerous the application eh? because the the uh engine can be dismantled from this uh, wing so it's very dangerous that's why uh vibration is very important expect to study yeah. and then uh, fewer moving parts as compared to the safe operating engine and then we can operate at low operating pressure and we can produce high operation speed and we use the low lubricating oil and this we contribute for the cost and consumption and then obviously when you look into the advantage you look at the complexity of the engine we have the compressor we have the turbine turbo machinery so it's very complex that the first the advantage eh? and then since they are very complex and uh, very huge uh, size so we can expect that we have we need more cost eh, to develop eh, this engine okay and then because the material also need to be stronger because they will uh, can we withstand with the high temperature uh, produced from the combustor or the turbine blade eh? we need to use the material at very high melting temperature okay to sustain the one and then since it's complex this will design and manufacturing of gas turbine is very tough problem okay and then it will less efficient as compared to the reciprocating engine especially in the idle condition and then they will delay response to change in power setting okay so the, the advantages are explained why the road vehicle which are more smaller, cheaper, and follow a less regular pattern, use than tank, helicopter, large boat, and so on. Okay, we do not use the customer engine, except in the first and furious eight. 
bro. Eh? You guys should check out eh? the the car that used from uh, for the uh, uh, the uh, the car that used by the Vin Diesel, the Metorado, eh? where we use the car mounting with a gas turbine heat. Okay, yeah, absolutely outrageous. Okay, so this is a working principle uh, in the uh, gas turbine. So normally the gas turbine will develop three uh, main components, which is the combustion chamber, compressor, and turbine. And the compressor and turbine will be connected with the shaft. So here is a compressor, here is turbine, and here is going to be the combustion chamber. Okay? So gas turbine engine derive uh, their power from the burning fuel in the combustion chamber. Okay. And then using the fast flowing gas, the combustion gases to drive the turbine. So it sucks the air, clean air from the atmosphere and compress it and send into the combustion chamber. And then to the first, the first uh, principle of the gas turbine is that this one. Eh? The first one is this one. So it sucks the air from the atmosphere to the intake and through the compressor. And when the air has been compressed and entered the combustion chamber and the fuel will be injected. Okay, the fuel will be injected at here. So fresh air go inside the compressor. So became the compressed air. Okay, became the compressed air here. Okay. Became as a compressed air. Okay. So inside the combustion chamber, then they will inject the fuel and then the combustion will be occur. So this, this principle actually is quite similar with the uh, diesel engine, right? So diesel engine, the air through the intake valve and then the piston will compress it and then after a certain uh, stage, probably at the top that center, the uh, fuel will be injected into the uh, compressed air, then the combustion will occur. It's similar with this one. Okay. The principle almost similar, but the difference is fuel. Eh? So fuel for the customer engine. Okay. We use kerosene. Eh? Hello. Uh, if the, uh, car, a eh, diesel, we use diesel. Eh? So we use kerosene. And after that, the combustion, we produce the power to the turbine and then drive the turbine. Okay, the fuel injected in the compressed air. Okay, then compressed air in the combustion chamber and ignited, and then the gas expand doing the work and finally exhaust outside. Okay, so clear. So this is the detail of the explanation. Eh? The first one we call it intake phase. So the intake phase is fresh air at ambient combustion is drawn into the engine by the action of the compressor. So here is the fresh air, the state one. And then state two in the compressor is a compression process. That means the intake air is compressed using part or work output from the turbine. So this drive the compressor. So because the function of the compressor in any mechanical device is one, is to increase the pressure. So that's the function of the compressor. Okay. After that, they will in, uh, enter the combustion chamber. So in the combustion chamber, the combustion will be occur here because the fuel is sprayed inside the inside the uh, compressed air, then the combustion will be occur. It's similar like diesel cycle. Okay. Then uh, during the combustion phase, the fuel is sprayed. Okay. During the combustion combustion phase, the fuel is sprayed into the combustor and burn, converting the chemical energy to the thermal energy. Okay. All right. And then after that, in the turbine, the expansion phase. So the thermal energy convert to mechanical energy. Okay. And then the turbine is used to drive the compressor at the fan. So this is a phase. Eh? Okay. The intake phase, compression phase, and combustion phase. And last one, the expansion phase. So here you can see the, the state. Eh? State one to state two and the compressor, state two to state three in the combustion chamber and state 3 to state 4 in the turbine because this is very important to, de to divide into state because when you try to develop your TS diagram 
So this state will be playing the main role. Okay? You know, you have, you have to know the state. Okay. So uh, in the internal combustion engine for the uh, auto cycle and diesel cycle, so petrol we have the auto cycle and diesel we have diesel cycle. And then for the gas turbine, we call it Brighton cycle. Okay, so when you're calling about the hiker, so they have two different uh, graph. The first one is PV diagram, and second one is TA diagram. But in gas turbine, we insert on the TA diagram. So as you can see here, from okay, uh, the other one is the walking fluid is air and then behave and ideal gas. That mean if you behave and the gas, you can use any ideal gas relation. Eh? Okay, so in the process at the compressor, state one to state two is a process of compressor. We call it asentropic compression. So if you look into the graph here, so here is a at the compressor process one to two. Here is at the compressor process one to two. Process two to three, okay, is a process at the combustion chamber, right? So we call it constant pressure here. This is for constant pressure. That means at here, eh, you can see here, okay, P three equal to P two, and then here, and then uh, this one is uh, at the combustion chamber, eh? so. Process uh, two to three is process at combustion chamber. Okay. And then process three to four is a process of asentropic expansion in the turbine. So three to four is the asentropic expansion in the turbine. So here process at the turbine. Okay. And then four to one is process at the uh, QR out. Lah. So constant pressure is rejection. So we have the constant pressure here. So here so P2 equal to P1 equal to P4. Okay. So P1 equal to P4. Okay. So clear. So this is a process. Right? Okay. So when you're talking about asentropy uh, relation for the process 1 to 2, it's a process of asentropic compression. So you can use the asentropic relationship. Okay. So it's similar like auto cycle and diesel cycle so uh, in the auto cycle and diesel cycle the process of one two is a process of isotropic compression and we put particularly interest on the q in right but in this case uh, sorry uh, w in eh? so this one we can calculate the compressor process because you know that the ts diagram okay so the ts diagram the TA diagram, okay, something like this one. One, two, three, four. So here is at the compressor. Okay, so between two T, uh, T2 and T1, you can calculate the compressor. Work. Okay, W compressor. W compressor lah. Okay. And then here, we can calculate, uh, calculate the Q in. So Q in actually is from T3 and T2. But we particular that we use the CP. Eh? Uh, okay, different with the auto cycle and the cycle, we use CV. Eh? So CP basically is a Austin pressure uh, heat capacity. Okay, so the value is 1.005 kilojoule per kg kelvin eh? right so kg kelvin okay right so use the constant value right eh? because actually in practical we need to calculate the value of cp eh? but in kdm442 we use 1.05 and then process 3 to 4 is a process at the turbine with the centropic uh, so the expansion so you can calculate the value turbine so the blue turbine is here and you can use the centropic relationship and the last one is a constant pressure heat ejection. You can use the Q out. So this is some uh, emphasize on the previous uh, previous uh, questions. And then, as you can see here, the blue input of the compressor can be calculated, and the blue out can be calculated. Eh? So before before this, the 
W ni okay, is Q in minus Q out right. So but okay, for this but in okay in Brighton cycle okay in Brighton cycle W ni actually is equal to W turbine minus W compressor. Okay, right. Okay, clear. Yeah. Right. So thermal efficiency can be calculated by using this formulation. Okay, because any thermal efficiency is W net over Q in. Eh? So thermal efficiency is W net over Q in. So W turbine minus W compressor divided by Q in so this one okay right okay and then you can uh you can express in terms of the temperature eh? something like this one okay and then you can use a central peak equation to calculate the temperature for t2 and t4 normally yeah and then since you know that p4 equal to p1 and you know that p2 equal to p3 then you can use also the relationship which is at the eventually you can get the thermal efficiency basically is equal to 1 minus t1 over t2 so t1 over t2 can be calculated by using the formulation of t2 over t1 equal to p2 over p1 uh, k minus 1 divided by k so this one is equal to pressure ratio K minus one divided by K, so you can replace this into here. Okay, so you can get the value of thermal efficiency in terms of the pressure ratio. Is here. Okay, this is the first criteria of the performance. Second criteria we call it back work ratio. So back work ratio is just simply you divide the W compressor divide by W and one. Then you get the value of back work ratio. Because, okay, from the combustion chamber, okay, from the combustion chamber, you have the power at the turbine, right? Okay, at the turbine. So here at the turbine. Some of the work we drive the, to use to drive the compressor. Some of the work we will produce the W work, eh? go out, okay, right. So this ratio to be back, we call it backward ratio. So here the explanation, eh? okay, there's the explanation. So part of the work from the turbine is used to drive the compressor, which then require the work input, we call it backward ratio. Okay, so this one can be calculated. Eh? Okay, and then this graph. Basically, you can see that as we increase the Okay, so as you increase the pressure ratio, so the thermal efficiency also getting increased. Right, but at a certain pressure ratio, okay, the thermal efficiency will be constant. So that's why we need to get the very optimum pressure ratio eh? so in order to find the very high uh, thermal efficiency eh? for the performance. Okay, guys, I think that's all for the part one. Okay. So at, at this stage, you know, we will, you already learn about the basic components of the gas turbine engine. We have three, first one, the compressor, combustion chamber, and turbine. And then you also have been explained about the working principle of the gas turbine. And then the third one, okay, you also, uh, introduce about, has been introduced about the performance of the gas engine, which is the thermal, thermal efficiency and also the backward ratio and then uh, on top of that you also have been recalled back eh, what you have learned into the uh, auto cycle and diesel cycle and use the relationship to calculate the performance or the parameter in the gas power cycle okay guys i think that's all for the part one and then see you on the part two and during the part two we will try to solve the example that related to this 
problem. Okay, I think that's all for today. So uh, for the part one, so thank you very much. See you on part two. Okay, thank you guys.